Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Aaron Hilliard from Mushroom Wonderland. I'm also the Vice President of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society here in Kitsap County, Washington. And today I'm going to go out into the woods, an old growth stand, and see what kind of wild mushrooms are growing out here and help describe them for you. I'm at a place called the Big Tree Trail uh, at the Kitsap Outdoor Theater in Bremerton, Washington. And this is actually an old growth stand, kind of one of the rare old growth stands that aren't in a national park here in western Washington, but it's a preserve so none of these mushrooms should be harvested. We're just going to be looking at them and describing them. Sometimes if I have to flip a mushroom over to identify it, that's okay. It really doesn't hurt the mycelium to pluck the fruiting bodies, but hopefully this is a walk just kind of for beginners to see what it can look like in an old growth habitat, what kind of mushrooms might be growing out here, whether they are edible or poisonous or maybe hallucinogenic. Um, we're going to find all that out here on this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. So come with me into the forest to discover what kind of mushrooms are growing out here in autumn of 2023. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. All right, so we're approaching the trailhead and one cool thing about this trail, it's called Big Tree Trail because it actually has the biggest Douglas fir on the Kitsap Peninsula here. It's a huge tree called Big Tree. So we're gonna go down there all the way down to the tree. It's probably like a 20 minute walk and uh, we'll see what kind of mushrooms we find along the way. This is just a very quintessential Pacific Northwest forest with a lot of familiar foliage. If you're from this area, we have a this black huckleberry, a vaccinium ovatum. This this is a shrub that's usually around forests where a lot of good edible mushrooms grow, along with this one, salal. This gets picked agriculturally for flower arrangements and stuff. And these sword ferns. You know, if you have sword ferns and you have salal and you have black huckleberry and you have large conifer trees you are in a good forest for good edible mycorrhizal mushrooms that grow here in the northwest so mycorrhizal mushrooms are mushrooms that need a tree to associate with they don't necessarily live on dead decaying matter they live in a symbiosis with trees in which they can break down certain things in the soil that the, tr that the trees will utilize and then the trees in return feed the fungus a carbon in the form of carbohydrates and fats, you know, sugars and fats. So the mushrooms and the trees really get along out here. Not really the mushrooms, the fungus. So the fungus grows underground and then the mushrooms are just the fruiting bodies. So if you're new to mushroom foraging, you got to understand that relationship. That the mycelium in the ground is the actual body of the fungus. And then what you see growing is just the fruiting body. It's just a spore produce, producing system, you know, a spore dispersal system. Look at this mushroom growing right here off of this conifer log. You see this kind of caramel colored cap. And then the stipe or the stem has this really flocose look. That's what we call that. It's kind of fr fuzzy chevrons or a, or a snake skin pattern. That's what I am going to pick so we can look at it. This mushroom, Hyphaloma dispersum. This one is one of the hyphalomas. We have a few species that grow here really commonly in the northwest. This one is the least common of those three. Um, there's sulfur tufts and conifer tufts. And then I don't know what the common name for these are, but um, they're related to some mushrooms that can be pretty poisonous. They're a white rot decayer. The fungus is actually in this log. And this is just a fruiting body growing out of the log. And there'll be more popping up too. So don't worry, I'm not hurting anything by picking this mushroom. You you have to look under under the gills to uh, to really be able to identify a mushroom safely. So Hyphaloma dispersum, cool little mushroom. So some mushrooms live in wood like that, and that one is eating decaying stuff. It doesn't live in symbiosis with the trees. 
And then other mushrooms will grow right out of the ground here and they'll be in a symbiotic relationship with the trees. Right here, we have another saprotrophic mushroom. This one's really common on the trail sides in Washington State, in the Pacific Northwest, really all over the country and around the world. It's a really common mushroom. We commonly call this the sulfur tuft. And it's got this really fluorescent green looking kind of color to it. Um, it's going to also have dark spores, same colored spores as that last little one that we saw. And these ones have these yellowish caps that have kind of a greenish tinge to them. And these are one of the more poisonous local mushrooms that grow here in the northwest. They can grow in big flushes. There's another grouping of them that's growing on this, on this chunk of wood down here. So they're always growing on wood. They're decaying the wood matter here. Really common and they're everywhere this fall. So Hyphaloma fasciculari, or the sulfur tuft. When you see these growing in their nice clusters, um, they can look very impressive, but a good one to avoid because these will cause you pretty severe gastrointestinal distress. Not necessarily deadly or anything, but, but uh, pretty poisonous, pretty toxic. So the sulfur tuft, we'll leave that one alone. And uh, just kind of keep coming down the trail. It's a really cool fence that somebody built out of sticks. It's awesome. This is a really great mushroom season, 2023 in the autumn. Uh, just tons of mushrooms growing right now. And here's a cool little fruiting. Oh, this is a neat little relationship we have going on here. So this guy, it's got kind of a fuzzy cap, right? There's a broken one right here. I'm gonna pick this one to show you what it looks like underneath. This one is called Suillus lakei. So this is edible, Suillus mushrooms are edible. And it has this sponge pore surface underneath with these elongated pores. You see the little, little holes kinda interesting looking. Definitely not gills. But these mushrooms, Suillus, Quite a big genus, a lot of different species fruiting right now in the Pacific Northwest. These ones are really, really, uh, really dominant here in the conifer forest. And then growing right here, we have a slimy little mushroom. Looks pretty different from the Suillus. So the Suillus really tomentose has a fuzzy cap and that yellow spongy pore surface. And it has this annulus, this little area on the stem or on the stipe where the cap opened up and it left behind this tissue on the stipe. Now we have this guy growing right here. And this dude is actually a gilled mushroom. Can you see under there, those gills under there? So not a sponge, not pores like the Suillus. This one has gills and it's really slimy. This one's known as Gomphidius. Gomphidius smithii, I believe is this one. And so this one is actually parasitizing these. So the mycelium is underground here and the Suillus is living in association with tree roots like this. So the Suillus on the tree and then this mushroom just jumped in the mix and it's actually just parasitizing the mycelium of the Suillus. So it's getting all of its nutrients from the Suillus which is sharing nutrients with the tree. So you have a symbiosis here, tree, mushroom and then you have a parasite here one fungus feeding off of another fungus interesting and as i'm standing right here i actually see an example of a mushroom that can also be quite parasitic see this guy growing out of the hillside right here and if you look underneath more gills and it's got this really rugged looking uh, annulus or ring zone decurrent gills so this one can actually be a parasite. This is known as the honey mushroom or Armillaria species. And so this one living on dead wood up here, oh, it just kind of fell out of there. Here, we'll have a look at it. Don't worry, I'm not going to take any of these out of here. But this is your honey mushroom, real scaly on the cap. It's kind of honey colored. That's why they're called honey mushrooms. But um, these gills run decurrent. That means that they run down the stem a little bit. It's got this really chunky annulus where the cap opened up it left this tissue here on the stem so it has this this really kind of indicative pattern on the stem too but armillaria or honey mushrooms the largest organism in the world is a honey mushroom 
uh, mycelium over three and a half square miles. I've heard varying numbers, but Armillaria ostea is uh, covering just thousands of acres in eastern Oregon. And the mycelium of this very honey mushroom I'm holding right here could be running all through these hills. You know, that's one interesting thing about mushrooms is that, you know, there is no central part of the body of the fungus. So a little tiny chunk of the mycelium could be moved and then grow a whole new, whole new uh, network of mycelium. And so essentially they can be considered kind of immortal that way. Very interesting concept. But here's your Armillaria species. I don't know the exact species, but this is a honey mushroom. I'm just going to kind of tuck it back in there. And uh, so we got a lot of cool fungal stuff going on out here. And here you can see some of these big towering fir trees, Douglas fir, Pseudosuga mensesii. These, these monsters uh, grow here on the northwest corner of North America and uh, gorgeous. And then right here, a western hemlock growing on top of the roots of the Douglas fir. So a lot of these just big massive trees out here. And there's some western red cedar one that's kind of leaning here. But uh, a beautiful stand of forest. And uh, I noticed some mushrooms going right here. Look at this guy. Ooh, that's pretty. Aha. Let me come around to this side over here. And look at that kind of grayish colored cap. Darker in the center. Kind of speckly. And then it gets whiter and whiter and whiter. Beautiful ring on the stem like that. Or the stipe. We call that. And underneath, this guy is going to have pink gills. Uh, right now, they're just kind of cream colored, but they're definitely taking on that pink color. As it matures a little, they'll get pink. And then when the spores ripen, they will turn chocolate brown. So this one's related to your grocery store button mushroom or the portobello. But this one's actually toxic. Um, this one is called Agaricus deardorfensis. And uh, it's closely related also to the prince. But the prince is going to have a really almondy smell. And it will stain yellow even just by rubbing it. But this one doesn't do that. And it doesn't have that almond-like smell. This one, toxic in the lose your lunch bunch. So if you ate this, you'd probably get pretty nauseous. People can get pretty sick from some of these agaricus mushrooms. But agaricus deardorfensis, this one, toxic. And I would just... Uh, leave it alone. Now, the grocery store button mushroom is Agaricus bisporus. And then when it grows up, we call it a portobello, but it's the same thing as the little button. And then there's a white button and a brown button. So they are all the same mushroom. Ooh, how pretty. Look at this. Some Ramaria or Ramaria. This one, coral fungi. This one, orange. And uh, it's beautiful. I'm not sure of the exact species. I just kind of call these Ramaria species. Some of them will upset your tummy. Some of them are uh, good eating, uh, supposedly. So I don't really know how to separate the species very well. It's quite a complex uh, genus with a lot of different species. Some of them good to eat, some of them not, but they sure are pretty. They really decorate the forest floor out here. big dead rotting log and there's all these kind of like little orange colored mushrooms growing all over it these are really common gonna have a dark little stem see that really kind of orangish yellow gills these ones grow in big troops known as xeromphalina not really edible probably edibility unknown i doubt they're like really toxic or anything but um they're just so little that by the time you cook them it would just disintegrate to nothing. Heavily decurrent gills, dark stipe, orange cap, big troops on rotting wood. This one, Xeromphalina. This one isn't big tree, but boy, it's a big tree. That guy's dead in a big windstorm. This is gonna kill something. Hopefully nobody's here in the forest when this thing comes falling down. It's 
probably 15 feet around. There's a few huge western red cedar right here. And although these are beautiful trees, super useful to the forest and to people, they're not host to any mycorrhizal uh, fungi that we are interested in. So these roots just don't get into symbiosis with, with good mycorrhizal mushrooms like chanterelles and matsutake and lobster mushrooms and a lot, a lot, a lot of the good mushrooms here in the Northwest. Although they're useful for a million things, if you come across a whole bunch of these kind of scaly cedar droppings, I would just proceed on because you're not going to find a lot of good mushrooms. They're very acidic and mushrooms just don't like the soil. They have like antifungal properties. That's why it's such a good building material, red cedar. Uh, you can see big flushes of mushrooms growing off of the logs around here. These undoubtedly a species of Mycena. Mycena being a really common white gilled little mushrooms that are saprotrophic, meaning they're growing off of dead wood and decaying matter. Always nice when you see a big flush of those. Uh, here's more of this species of, of uh, Mycena. And there's like 2,000 different species. So I don't know exactly which ones those are. So I'm not even going to venture a guess. But if you know, throw it in the comments. Mycena, a genus of mushrooms that typically aren't eaten. They're so small and delicate. Again, by the time you cooked them, they just would, they would just turn into nothing. A lot of fungal activity happening within this one dead tree. There's so much life out here. Even when things are dead, the fungus comes to life, you know. Something in the in the genus Inosibi, so a medium brown spore print. These ones are more white. Very umbinate, looks like a little nipple on top, right? And the brown spores, this one, Inosibi pallidicremea or something to that effect. Um, these guys probably contain muscarin and can be pretty toxic. So leave the Inosibis behind, but another example of a mushroom that grows with the trees here. These trees and the mushrooms really get along. So there's just mats of different mycelium overlapping each other of different types of fungus that are all living in symbiosis with these trees and stuff. Really, really cool relationship going on. Down here, more Inosibi. There's a lot of species of Inosibi, really common mushroom on the sides of trails and in your yard around conifer trees. Right down here, I see some kind of interesting mushrooms. There's two of them. One of them's fallen over, but look at these. They've got it, that little umbo in the center of the cap, very striate, which means they have these lines around the edge of the cap. See all the little lines? That's called striate. And if we look down under the needle duff here, let me try to dig down under here a little ways. Look at that. This thing is growing out of a sack. So it's got a really, let me bring this up here. Oh, it broke. There you go. There's that's called a vulva. It's a it's a sac-like structure that the mushroom actually emerges out of. Um, death caps actually have this because they are related. This one, Amanita pachycolea, or the Western Grisette. These are actually edible and a decent edible, but because they come out of that vulva feature, um, they could potentially be confused for. Some of the deadly Amanitas, I suppose. You can see that one down there. So it's kind of like an egg that it grows out of. Ooh, that one's full of water and stuff. Neat. 
some kind of mysterious liquid in there. Drink that, you get superpowers. Or an upset stomach, I'm not really sure. But Amanita pachycolea or the Western Grisette, a decent edible mushroom when you cook it. These ones are a little past their prime. They would have white spores, just like other Amanitas. So Amanita has uh, five or six different sections. And these ones in section vaginata. So beautiful, interesting, and a cool vulva structure on the bottom of the stem there. Really indicative of certain sections of Amanita. Related to your uh, Mario mushroom or your red one with the white spots, Amanita muscaria. Closely related, really. Same genus. What do we got growing here? Something popping out of the soil here. Look at that. This one, a Russula brevipes. So this one, the short-footed Russula. This is the host of the lobster mushroom. So when this gets parasitized by Hypomyces lactiflorum, it will become a lobster mushroom. But as of now, this is just a Russula brevipes, really common mushroom known as a brittle gill. And these are edible. Um, not really desired. This one's way past its due date. So it is it is no good for eating anymore. You will get food poisoning from eating rotten mushrooms. Keep that in mind. I'm just going to kind of put that back. Oh, wow. Look at all the beautiful Mycena galariculata growing off of this log. These are big Mycenas. Look at that. Boom. It's like the biggest Mycena out there, I believe. Ooh, that looks kind of suspect. What does that look like to you? Put it in the comments. So growing right next to these Mycenas, I look down and I pluck this. And this is one of the more deadly mushrooms that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. This one known as Gallerina marginata or the funeral bell or the skull cap. So these grow off of wood like this really mature, decayed conifer log that all these Mycenas like. This is growing right, right, right amongst them, really. And so this one's got kind of an orange spore print. It's gonna have that ring on the stem like that. And this one kind of has a little bit of a ruffly margin, you see that? That's why it's called marginata. But this guy sometimes gets confused for magic mushrooms in the genus Psilocybe because they do kind of look like this caramel-colored cap. And, uh, you know, this could be mistaken for a psilocybe mushroom, but, you know, eat eight or ten of these would ki kill a full-grown man, you know. So, you should know your little brown mushrooms. This one is the one why little brown mushrooms are scary. is because Gallerina marginata, this guy, contains amatoxins, the same toxins that are inside of death caps. And this thing will liquefy your kidneys and your liver. And so, don't give it a chance to. It's okay to handle these kind of mushrooms. I could even taste test this if I wanted, but I don't want to. As long as you don't swallow it and digest it, you're okay. So it's always okay to touch mushrooms. Just do, definitely do not swallow this one. Not only is it gonna give you gastrointestinal upset like crazy and make you vomit and all of that, you'll start thinking you're feeling better. And then a few days after that, your uh, your liver and your kidneys start shutting down, and unless you can get a liver transplant, you know, you're uh, you're a goner. I'm hearing all this ruckus going on over here at this creek. Let's check it out. How cool! So these chum salmon are running up this stream right now.
anyways, that is awesome. <laughs> Seeing the salmon running is always cool, but I want to get back on the trail. Let's go talk about more mushrooms. I came here for the mushrooms. The fish are awesome though. And there's this big story about these ecosystems and the fish and how they, the bears will get the fish and then bring them out and, uh, and put nitrogen into the soil and get sucked up by these trees that then grow mycorrhiza. So the salmon are even important to the mushrooms. But right up here is a log that caught my eye. And we have some really awesome mushrooms growing right here. These are sure beautiful. Look at these. These are known as Tremedes versicolor or the turkey tail mushroom. And they're growing on this old deciduous log up there. I see more hyphaloma. So the turkey tail, also a white rot decayer, and it's eating the inside. Look at these like florets of them. One way you can positively ID turkey tail is I'm going to just pick one off. And you can see it's got white pores, little tiny holes um, underneath the mushroom. A false turkey tail would just be smooth, but don't worry. They're not toxic. There's nothing that really looks like this. Concentric color rings kind of fitting for upcoming Thanksgiving. And the turkey tail mushroom, really, really common. And probably the most highly studied for medicinal benefits, the mycelium anyways. But people take these fruiting bodies and then make them into tea and drink that. And, uh, you know, it's been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. And an even cooler, maybe more medicinal mushroom just caught my eye right here. And it's growing off the end of this log. Would you look at this? There's two of them. They're kind of little, beyond their prime. This one, Heresium arenaceus. This one, the lion's mane. So really kind of a rare find here in Western Washington to find a lion's mane. And it grows these elongated teeth underneath. And those teeth actually... Uh, or where the spores are produced. So I can harvest a little tiny piece of this and take it home and put it on agar and then start growing my own lion's mane from a wild culture. Looks like there was a couple of fruiting bodies. There's probably one there. There's another one here and this one here. Kind of small, but uh, these are also a delicious edible mushroom. Really easy to cultivate and beautiful. Uh, most medicinal mushroom powders and stuff will contain lion's mane because this is said to be so medicinal. And when you slice it and cook it up, it's a lot like seafood, in my opinion. I thought it had the texture of like kind of like scallops. Um, really awesome, really beautiful mushroom. Excited to see that growing here on the end of this old log. So another white rot decayer that uh, is just chewing up the wood out here actually found one here in the same spot last year. So this mushroom, uh, the fungus dwells within this log and lives throughout the summer. And then it creates these fruiting bodies in the autumn. And always nice to see that growing here, wild. The Heresium arenaceus or the lion's mane mushroom. More hyphaloma. These mushrooms really glow bright with a UV flashlight. You could bring one of those out here and just see them glowing from a mile away. Oh, look at this. How cool is that? This one, really gummy looking. It's got little teeth underneath here. You see that? These are tough to photograph. This one's Pseudohydnum gelatinosum or the cat's tongue because of its fuzzy little, little teeth like a cat's tongue. Um, Look, you can see the actual mycelium of it growing here on the outside of this moss. These uh, I've made into gummy candy before. They're totally perfectly edible. You could eat it raw if you like that kind of gelatinous thing. There's just really no flavor to it. But you can soak it in sugar syrup and then uh, can dehydrate them into candies. And that was kind of fun to do. You can watch that video if you look back into Mushroom Wonderland. But here it is, Pseudohydnum gelatinosum growing with some foamy topsis on the end of this old log with a little baby Gallerina semilanciata, but uh, related to that deadly Gallerina, but this one in a different section, probably not deadly, but these ones definitely could make a little snack out of them. Pseudohydnum gelatinosum, how weird is that? 
pretty cool. Look at that, a whole bunch more armillaria honey mushrooms. These ones are kind of younger here. You can see a, what a young one looks like. A young honey mushroom. A lot of people in the identification forums just randomly put just any old mushroom and they go, honey mushroom? Is it a honey mushroom? This is what a honey mushroom looks like, okay? So, quit asking if everything is a honey mushroom. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't care if you, if you keep asking. It, even if even if they are, they're they're not like a great edible or anything. So, I don't know why you want it to be a honey mushroom so bad. Here's more coming out of the ground. They kind of have these little little scale looking things on them when they're young. More honeys. Lots of honeys and cat's tongues. Pretty cool. Whoa, look at that huge cat's tongue. Dang, you don't usually see them that big. <laughs> That's like a lion's tongue. That's a big old kitty tongue. Look at that thing. That's awesome. Oh, a bunch of more little cat's tongues. Really out right now. So you could come out and collect a bunch of those. Not to this place, but somewhere else. You could go and pick a bunch of the cat's tongues and make yourself some little gummy candies out of mushrooms. If your heart desires to do that. Which, yeah, it's kind of fun. I did it once, and that was probably probably the last time, too. And there she is. There's Big Tree. They recently built this deck around her, so people weren't stepping on the roots so much. But look at this tree. That thing is massive. So these trees, Douglas fir, can, you know, live six, seven hundred, eight hundred years. And they eventually get so dang big that they just fall over. This one is holding tight for now. And uh, man, it goes way up to the sky. This thing, I don't know if you can really gauge how big it is by me standing here, but man, this is at least 25 feet around. This thing is a beast and a half. So a humongous tree aptly named Big Tree. So this tree has some charring inside this really thick bark here, which means that it's lived through some forest fires. And that's how these trees get so big. The bark is really thick and it's resistant to forest fire. The red cedar, the big leaf maple, these other trees, even Western hemlock are gonna burn where these trees can survive. And only after a disturbance like that can their seeds germinate and new generations of Douglas fir come growing up. So there's this huge mother tree right here. And then there's also big fir trees out here that are not even close to as big as this size. So by looking at the rings inside of this tree whenever it dies and at, and at the next generation of tree, you can really determine a timeline as to when forest fires swept through this area, burning everything, and then new generations of Douglas fir were able to come up and get enough sunlight to grow. But it's only a matter of time before it gets so heavy and so big that it's going to topple over under its own weight, and then the cycle repeats itself. But for now, really happy to see big trees like this still existing. This is Big Tree in Bremerton, Washington. I love walking through a big quiet forest like this. And I also like watching videos where other people are walking through magical places. So if you enjoy this kind of a video, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll keep making them and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Whoa, that's a big one. Look at this guy growing right down here. Whoa, and look at the vulva that's coming out of. That is amazing. This is an amazing Amanita right here. This could be a Kokora, which is um, an edible Caesar Amanita, but I've never known them to grow up here. What a cool mushroom, wow. You can see that huge vulva that it's growing out of. That cup thing, that would be a definite indicator of certain Amanitas, some of them that are deadly. But this one, really beautiful edible Amanita, even though if you're new to the game, I wouldn't try it out. Death caps can look very much like this. Um, so definitely not a beginner mushroom, but wow, really cool to see that growing here on the side of the trail.
is just one of the coolest mushrooms I've seen today for sure, in my opinion. I'm gonna take some leaves and kinda give it a little disguise. It's a pretty mushroom. I want it to finish its life cycle here. I really would like to collect that to uh, take to the mushroom show this weekend, but it is a preserve. Ooh, look at this. Oh, growing right here on the side of the trail. And I, I actually saw another one right up here. I'll take a better look at this one next to its buddy. Oh, there's another one back there. So there's a few here. This one, really bright red stem. And it's got this margin around the edge of the cap. And this really dark colored cap. I believe this one, Xerocomella zellerii, used to be known as the... Um, Bolita zellerii or the Zeller's Bolete. Got kind of a skinnier stipe, really maroon colored, yellow pore surface. This one definitely old and full of bugs, but red all the way up the stipe. And then this really light colored margin. See the edge of the cap, how it's really light colored. So, Zero Camellus atropurpureus, lacking that red, or I mean that light colored margin. And the stipe typically isn't red all the way up. This one I think is the real Zellers Bolete. They're a little bit difficult to decipher between the real Zellers and the Atropurpureus. But these ones, uh, decent edible. A lot of people really like to eat these actually. And get kind of excited when they find a patch of them. This would be enough to make a couple of nice omelets or something. Just make sure you cook them well. Oh, look at this. Quite a bit bigger of one. Wow, look at how kind of reddish colored the cap is. Beautiful. I love that. Nice little patch of Zeller's Bolites. So I just have to put it out there. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like Mushroom Wonderland, you could jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com and get yourself some merch, like a hat, a hoodie, a t-shirt, coffee mug, whatever, kind of help support the channel. Or you could go to Patreon and um, get a membership there for like $5. Or if you just want to like buy me a coffee or something, you can look in the description of this video and there's different links to all of my social media and stuff. So please help support Mushroom Wonderland if you like these videos. I love making them and bringing them to you guys. But uh, maybe you could show some love, you know what I mean? Because I love y'all. So autumn is definitely the best time of year to be out here mushroom hunting. And until we have some really hard freezes, uh, the mushrooms are gonna keep coming up. And that being said, some mushroom species even like it when it gets a little bit colder. So do not fret. We had a little cold snap, a few cold days, but I don't think it slowed down the mushrooms. So I come across some cool mushrooms right here. Check these out. These are known as yellow feet or winter chanterelles. Definitely gonna pick this so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at that, Craterellus tubeformis or the yellow foot chanterelle, the winter chanterelle. These are a great edible in my opinion, one of my favorites. I'm actually allergic to golden chanterelles, which are in the genus Cantharellus, but these are in a completely different genus from those. So yellow feet are um, good for me to eat. Wow, there's a nice fruiting of them right there. So they can grow in really big troops, big numbers, and a lot of little young ones coming up. You can see why they call them yellow feet. So these are awesome, really beautiful mushrooms. And uh, I'm happy to see them out. Yellowfoot hunting is some of my favorite mushroom hunting. And uh, they're some of my favorite mushrooms to eat. So if you look at one, it's got decurrent gills that are, again, kind of like ridges. I guess that's why it would get the, the uh, you know, the common name chanterelle because it kind of looks like a chanterelle that way. Yellow, bright yellow at the base. And then really funnel shaped or umbilicate, kind of like a belly button there and look at that so this one even though it looks a little rough is in great shape perfect edible mushroom right here they have a kind of a tough little texture and they're really excellent so if you find these i suggest that you collect them up and eat them but again we're in a preserve so i'm just going to leave these behind to see the craterellus tubeformis winter chanterelles
right, you guys, I've had a total blast with you in the woods today. If you like this kind of ASMR, just silently walking through the forest talking about mushrooms video, please let me know in the comments. Also, make sure to hit subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Much love, everybody. Peace out.